<laughs> so uh, welcome everyone and thank you for coming to uh, one of our last activities of the day. I'm John Dupont, I'm a member of the Ontario Engineering Department. And it's really an honor and a really a pleasure for me to introduce our next uh, guest, who is Arlen Benskoder. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Arlen here at Lehigh for a really long time, nearly 20 years. Um, I started working with Arlen in about 1990. We worked together for almost 10 years in the Energy Research Center, doing a lot of things like failure analysis and working with industry problems through the Energy Research Center. And then I joined the faculty in 1990 and continued to work with Arlen. We co-taught in that 10 together. Uh, as you probably know, Arlen was the manager of the White Optical Microscopy Lab here at uh, Lehigh. And so um, I certainly want to talk a little bit about his accomplishments, but I thought, you know, in today, Two words I could pick to describe him are, and, and they came to mind very quickly, and they were excellence and enthusiasm. I also thought about using vertical challenge. <laughs> 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 but, uh, maybe, maybe for today, as long as you think that I can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always get all around it. That is like I'm so much taller. <laughs> so, but no, really, excellence and enthusiasm. You know, excellent. Uh, Arlen was outstanding at everything he did. Whether he was putting together one of the best light microscopy labs in the country, which he did, if I saw it, you know, materialize in front of me when Arlen was here, or whether Arlen was was polishing samples and taking photomicrographs that were going to end up in, in publications for students and, and faculty members. He always did an outstanding job in everything he did. It was really quite an example to try to follow. You know, it was common for me to be at, at conferences, and I would have colleagues from other institutions come up to me and say, the metallography and your publications, and all the Lehigh publications are just outstanding. And, and that was Arlen. Uh, Arlen wasn't there at the time, so I took all the credit. <laughs> 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 it was Arlen. It was definitely Arlen. That's right, yes, exactly. So uh, the other thing which I was even more um, in awe of was the enthusiasm. So the second person I talked to here at Lehigh when I interviewed for the job at the Energy Research Center was Arlen. So I talked to Arnie Martin first and then to Arlen. And we did sit in Arlen's office and, and talk. And Arlen took me around and showed me all the labs and all the new equipment he had. And it was obvious how proud he was of it and how excited he was and all the enthusiasm he had. And what was really remarkable to me is that enthusiasm never wavered. You know, I can remember Arlen shortly before he retired, so this is 20 years later coming into my office and he was so excited that he just talked one of the equipment manufacturers into sh selling him a piece of equipment for the fraction of the cost of it. And Arlen was really good at that. He was so excited. He said, it's going to be able to do this. We can do this. You can use it in all your research. And, I, and then I would get excited. It would be great. And then he would turn around and say, by the way, I need your account number so I can buy it. Because <laughs> as you know, Arlen, if you work with Arlen, he's really good at spending other people's money. <laughs> That's why we have the facilities we do. It's a little while. And so um, ex excellence and enthusiasm is what I think of. Um, and you really set an example for me to follow. I'm really grateful for that. So I just want to say a few words about his accomplishments and some of his background. So Arlen started Bethlehem Steel in 1965, March of 1965. I was exactly one year old. <laughs> um, he worked there until 1987. He started as a metallographer and worked his way all the way up until he was managing the R&D light optical microscopy labs of the Homer Research Lab. So that was Bethlehem Steel, you know, in the heyday of Bethlehem Steel. They, that was one of the um, research laboratories for doing research on steel. And he was managing the light optical microscopy labs. So in 1987, Arnie Martyr convinced him to come down to Lehigh. He joined Lehigh. He was manager of the light optical, the light optical microscopy lab and instructor of the MAT-10 course. We estimated that Arlen probably taught over 1,000 students in the University of he really touched a lot of people. His work has been featured in a lot of classic books. I'll just name a few. A number of ASM chapters, uh, ASM handbook chapters. George Krauss, I, hope, I don't know if George is still here. I think I have a really, yeah. Uh, a lot of work is in George Krauss's classic book on principles of heat-treated steel. Arlen, a lot of Arlen's work is in George Vanderbilt's books, uh, books on principles of the practices of metallography. Uh, and more recently, Ar Arlen co-authored his own book with Bruce Branford, on the Metallographer's Guide, Practices and Procedures for Iron and Steel. He's also received a number of awards. Uh, the Sorby Award from the International Metallographic Society, which if you're familiar with IMS, that's their top award in metallography. Uh, he was a distinguished educator at ASM International. He won the Bradley Stoughton Award here at the Lehigh Valley. 
He's one of the few metallographers in the history of ASM to be named a fellow of ASM International. In 1996, he um, received Lehigh's t uh, Teaching Excellence Award, which to my knowledge is the only time that's ever been given to a non-faculty member. And what's significant about that is that's selected by the students. So that's what tells you what the students think about it. Um, so I think Marlon's pretty, pretty, proud, pretty proud of those awards, but you don't hear him talk about those awards. What you will hear him talk about is the awards from all the students, and that's where he really shines. And so we added a little bit of this up, and this is really amazing. So the International Metal Graphics Competition is held every year. Arlen had 45 of the students placed in those competitions. 45. Oh. It was actually a 10-year span. So the Jack A. Lucas Award is the top prize in, in, in the International Metal Graphics Competition. And there was a 10-year span where Arlen's students won seven times. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. So, and I'm also really proud to say that um, Laura Moyer, who's taken over for Arlen, is continuing that and is sweeping the awards too. So Laura has done a great job of doing that. So we're really lucky to have her. So, um, and we wanted to really acknowledge Arlen for all the hard work um, that he put in while he was here and all the students that he touched, the great facilities that he left us. So we, as a faculty, agreed that we really should name the Nellographic Preparation Laboratory after him, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, along with that, is we've started a fund to keep up the equipment going in the laboratory. I know no, a number of you have donated. Uh, we know of those of you who have not. <laughs> <laughs> when you leave today, please bring out your checkbooks. And if you write us a check, you can leave. <laughs> but I uh, know more importantly, um, there has been a, a number of nice funds coming in, and, we, and Laura has been doing a great job of purchasing, uh, purchasing equipment. She's following right in Arlen's footsteps. She managed to squeak out a state-of-the-art micro-hardness indicator. Uh, for a fraction of the cost of what is worth, so she's teaching her well. And she's also uh, making arrangements to get a brand new metallograph, which is going to be of the similar quality that all our graduate students use, but it's going to be dedicated to undergraduate. So, um, the only challenge right now, I think, is to make sure Arlen is going to be able to seal the podium. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get one more. <laughs>
And I knew, I, I came from a world-class lab up at Homer. Uh, did not realize within 10 years it wouldn't exist anymore, but I no one that knew that. And uh, I was here a short period of time, and Dick Hertzberg came into the lab late one night and uh, looked around and said, what do you need to make this a world-class lab? And make up your wish list, and we went from there. These were the cold regions. I never questioned where he got the money. I just... <laughs> 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 the biggest thing was the trust, and the trust started with all the different department heads. They never questioned me, and uh, I didn't know if they didn't know what I was doing, or if they just had that much trust in me. But uh, as I look out, I see uh, several of you here today, and uh, I think that was the biggest thing, uh, is just the trust. Um, and I, I did not have that at the steel company. If I bought a $60 flow meter, I'd hear somebody knocking at the door. I had to justify why I bought it. The, uh, like I said, the trust was, was a big thing. And then Martin Harmer, uh, he was the first to, he had several micro harness testers and research microscopes. He said, take them down to the second floor and uh, to help with the lab. And we started building that. Uh, we built a heat treating lab, uh, again with Dick's money. When he ran out of money, then I had to tap into the professors. And, uh, but that was a pretty easy sale. I, and I think that's what made the department so unique, is that even though a professor would know that he would never use that piece of equipment, or he would still donate to it. And this would just made it just a class act and made it so enjoyable working here. Uh, the, uh, we brought in money other ways. Uh, Ken Hardy and Hardy Martyrs started the Ryerson program where we brought in money. Uh, and uh, the, the help from the, the grad students, once they saw what we were trying to do, make this central lab, they, would, they pitched in. And uh, they pitched in by help policing it when I wasn't here. Uh, there was a lot of bad habits, uh, people just walking away and, and not cleaning up after themselves. My work study students, I had, I think it was something like 119 work study students over a 21 year period. And they did a lot to keep the lab, lab going. Also, I knew I was at a unique place. I came back from my first vacation, and there was about five or six undergrads sitting by my door at 8 o'clock in the morning. I, my first impression was, what went wrong? <laughs> and they said, no, no, we're here to help you get started. We know you've been gone for a week. Where do you, where do you need help? And uh, it was, it was people like that that uh, just made the job so easy. I did not do it by myself. I did it with everybody's help. Uh, so the easy thing spending other people's money, like John said. Uh, the, uh, the companies helped us out. Uh, Lico Corporation, uh, uh, president of uh, USA Stewards came in. Uh, I mean, yeah, Stewards came in. What do you need? I mean, you need an automatic polisher. Within a couple of weeks, she had donated an automatic polisher. Bob Wade from the Mechanical Engineering Department donated accessories for it. So all these people just contributed. And I'm sure I'm forgetting, forgetting some people. DuPont Corporation donated a vibratory polisher. I had a, we had three pol pol uh, vibratory polishers. I don't remember where the third one came from. Uh, a salesman came in one day from a different company and said, I have something for you in the trunk. The companies would just donate to, uh, to the lab. Stewards Corporation one day uh, called up and said, we have some uh, writing papers if you would pay the, the shipping. I said, OK, no problem. When the pallet came, it was four foot by four foot. There's <laughs> something over 35,000 sheets of <laughs> Street value somewhere around 50 grand. <laughs> uh, they then were uh, closing up the lab up in New Haven, Connecticut, and they called me up and asked me, have I, do I have a truck? And, and from the call regions, of course I have a truck. <laughs> Bring it up. We're closing the lab down. And they just load up their truck with all kinds of uh, supplies for the lab. 
between that and uh, we were able to go to uh, some manufacturers. Uh, we bypassed the middleman uh, for our diamond. Uh, we paid uh, a fraction of what the diamond was costing everybody else. Um, and uh, Monsanto, Monsanto, we were getting our silicon carbide, silicon dioxide from it. So it was a combination of all these different coming together that the lab, I think the average cost of the sample when I left was something like $12 a sample. And uh, this is unbelievable because uh, it's the diamond and the polish, the papers alone are the dollar and a half a piece. But anyway, uh, so it's, it's a combination of, of all these different factors that help put the lab together. And, uh, and if, uh, it's, it's going to continue on because Laura already has purchased a new micro harvest tester, state of the art. And uh, I found out today that well, John noted that she's getting a new metallograph from Dealer Corporation. So uh, these connections with the outside is so important to, to maintain the lab and, uh, at, these, at these low costs. Again, thank you for the award. Uh, I, I, I told several people I always thought you have to be deceased or donate a lot of money to get a Thank you all. Thank you for coming. It's been a great two days. Yes.